بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله in a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is one of those ahadith which helps to give us hope for the many sins that we commit during the day and in the night and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our sins Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen An Abi Dharrin Jundab Jundab ibn Junada wa Abi Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اتق الله حيثما كنت واتبع سيئات الحسنة تمهها وخالك ناس بخلق حسن رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن وفي بعد النسخ حسن صحيح in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this hadith Ruahu uh, Tirmidhi, the hadith of Abi Dhar and Abi Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fear Allah wherever you are and follow up bad deeds, following up bad deeds or evil deeds with righteous deeds expiates them or erases them or removes them and treat people with excellent manners in this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it shows us again the high station of morality in Islam and having excellent manners and that it isn't just sufficient for us to claim to be from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah or to claim that we are Salafi or to claim that we are a Mu'min or any other description to describe the believers. But rather, we have to have action. We have to practice and exhibit those traits and characteristics and that supreme and that excellent morality which was characterized by our Prophet Sallallahu Rabbi wa Salamuhu Alayhi. So from this hadith, some of the fawaid or benefits that Musnid al-Qahtani mentioned, Hafadhallahu Ta'ala, is that this hadith shows the excellence and the superiority and the importance of illustrating and advising, illustrating good manners and illustrating khair and advising the youth. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised his Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'een and those who were young amongst them by saying, Fear Allah wherever you are and follow up uh, the evil deeds or sins with righteous deeds. So the Prophet wasallam was striving to have that educational effect and indeed he had that educational effect. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows the importance of this hadith of the Prophet wasallam that it it, in and of itself, has an, uh, a very important station in Islam from amongst the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why Imam Ibn Rajib al hafiz uh, mentioned, he said, فَهَذِهِ وَصِيَةُ عَظِيمًا جَامِعًا لِحُقُوقِ اللَّهِ وَحُقُوقِ عِبَادِهِ Imam al hafiz Ibn Rajib Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatun wasiyah. He said about this hadith, he said that this advice, this wasiyah, this advice, is from the most immense or immensely important advice, advices uh, that are all inclusive 
of the rights of Allah and the rights of His servant. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of advising with fearing Allah, bi taqwullah, taqwullah azza wa jalla. And we know taqwa, ahabati fillah, refers to adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding His prohibitions. And that the reminder benefits the believer. And it has an immense effect upon the hearts of the believers. And this comes through da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling the people, and preaching to the people, and teaching the people. And this is from the wasiya, this is from the, the means of advising for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the means of advice from the awwaleen wal akhreen, from those people who came before us, and those people will come after us. And those people from all throughout time who preceded us, from Ahlul Sunnah, that they advise the people. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Adina Nusiha, Adina Nusiha, Adina Nusiha. He said that the religion is sincere advice, and he mentioned it three times. So it shows us we can never stop advising one another and calling one another to good and da'wah ila Allah Azza wa Jal. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of taqwa Allah, of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that taqwa Allah is to put between yourself and the punishment of Allah a waqaya, a barrier. And the way in which you do that is by doing the commands of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. And that's what we were discussing prior to this. So if you want to put a means between yourself and the punishment of Allah, and who from amongst us doesn't want to do that, then it's not by taking a rock or a stone. It's not by taking a stone, but rather the waqaya comes from doing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling his commandments and avoiding his prohibitions. And the one who does that has achieved a great station because then they reach the station of being the muttaqin, the pious ones. Those are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. In Allah you hibbul muttaqin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muttaqin. He loves the pious ones. And that means that they have a great and superior station in this life as well as the hereafter. Another benefit of this hadith is the importance of accepting advice, accepting a wasiyah, be taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone advises you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to accept that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being of those people who are obstinate and rebellious and whose hearts are hard and do not accept the advice of people when they call you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this regard to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was advised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fear Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Al-Ahzab, قال, Ya ayu al-Nabi, ittaqu allaha, wa la tuti'i al-kafirin wal munafikina, inna allaha kana alimin hakima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, He says, O oh, you Nabi, He addressed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, O oh, you Prophet, fear Allah, and do not follow the disbelievers, and do not follow, follow the hypocrites. Verily Allah is all aware and all wise. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fear him. So what about us? What about us? We have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to advise one another to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be better believers. Another benefit of this hadith, and there are so many, is this hadith also shows the need that people have 
to be advised. To be advised to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are so many ways in which we fall short. Sometimes we're trying to do good and we're falling short. And someone can catch that. And they can advise us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya akhi, fear Allah in the, such and such matter. Ya, ya ukhti, my sister in Islam, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such and such affair. So we advise one another. And this is from the sifat of the mu'mineen, sifat of muttaqeen and sifat of the of, of the akhwat al imaniya ahl iman wa ahl thiq the people who have a fiqh and the people who have iman and the people who have islamic brotherhood who exhibit that brotherhood to advise one another uh, and, and 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 supplicate for one another another benefit of this hadith habitatullah is this hadith illustrates what we learn from another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said كُلُوا إِنَّ آدَمْ خَطَّ وَخَيْرَ خَطَّائِينَ التَّوَابُونَ All the children of Adam commit sins and the best of those who sin are those who repent. So this hadith affirms for us the meaning in there and that we cannot help but sin and we cannot help but make mistakes. But if we advise one another and strive to correct our mistakes and remove ourselves from bid'ah, and move, remove ourselves from sin. And guess what? What way we can do that? What did the Prophet wasallam say in this hadith that we're studying? The Messenger of Allah wasallam said, kunt al-hasana tamhuha. Tamhuha. The Prophet wasallam said, fear Allah wherever you are, and follow up the wicked sins, with righteous deeds. So the Prophet والسلام, let us know, yes, we make mistakes and we all sin, but we can correct those sins by doing something righteous and good and leaving off the sinfulness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of the tuwabin, those that come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith, which we need to hear, which encourages us and makes me feel happy even reading these fawahid, is the the immense mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his servant. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has so much mercy and is so forgiving. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And he forgives our sins and our mistakes. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Because we all make mistakes. And we're all in need of the, uh, the forgiveness uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many uh, ayat... For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Kitab al-Kareem, وَإِنِّي لَغَفُورٌ لَغَفُورٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمَلَ الصَّالِحَ ثُمَّ اَهْتَدَى SubhanAllah, beautiful uh, uh, ayat in Surah Al-Taha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, I am the most forgiving. لَغَفُور For whoever. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that this is for specific people. Specific people are going to really benefit from the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Liman taba, for those who make repentance and they believe and they do righteous deeds and then they are guided. So the one who is guided on the Siratullahi al Mustaqeen. And who makes toba to Allah repents from the, repent from the, the evil sins that you're doing. And believe. Believe that, that Allah is going to replace what you left from sin that you enjoyed with something better. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. If you're used to smoking weed, it's hard to leave smoking weed because you enjoy it. It's a social, maybe for some people it's social, it's a social drug. Uh, maybe some people they reflect a lot about different things in life. Some people, they just chill out. They like that. They like to just chill out and listen to some good jazz. Okay? Good jazz in the context. Not meaning that jazz is good. But that that some people find comfort in that. In my time prior to Islam, I liked it. I used to like it, that jazz, that smooth jazz. Okay? That, Ahabatifillah, people do those sins because they find something of comfort in it. You know, it's a way of escaping. They find some love, 
They find something that's sweet about those sins, of course, or they wouldn't do them. You don't do them because you're forced. You don't commit zina because you hate it in totality. It's because you enjoy those activities. And there's some ladha, there's some enjoyment in that. But that five minute of enjoyment, or whatever the amount of time that you enjoy, the sin, the wickedness that you, you incur from that, the, the, the immense sin that you get from that, will make you desire with a passion that you never ever did those wicked sins. So to earn that forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it requires tawbah, it requires iman, it requ- you know, believing in Islam correctly, it requires doing righteous deeds. And then being guided. And so that shows us that from those sins, follow it up with something righteous. Follow it up with something good. And this is uh, another beautiful ayat that is so munasib. That was mentioned. قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and those who who do فاحشة, so they do commit zina and they do what they do uh, do all the 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 crimes that are major sins related to the private parts. Or they oppress. And they oppress themselves. So when you commit zina, you oppress yourself because you've done something that's going to bring you harm. It's going it, to it's it's an oppression of yourself even if you got some levda, you got some uh, relief and you got some uh, something some fruit that you tasted. But the amount of oppression of your soul, because you're going to pay for that, perhaps in this life as well as the hereafter. Think about the one who commits the crime of adultery. Say one person who does uh, zina one time. He was always on istikama, and these are real things that happen to some people who are always religious and always unrighteous, and they only committed zina once. And that one time they did it, they got AIDS. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? All that time you were in righteousness and you just slipped up the one time you, you wanted to try it. Whatever induced you to, to try that. And then you got AIDS and you regretted it for the rest of your life. So you regretted it in this life and perhaps in the year after if they didn't make Tawbah. Wallahu musta'an. So here's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So he says those that do this fahisha or they, impress, they oppress themselves... They, and they re, they remember Allah kathira. They remember Allah, and they seek forgiveness for their sins. And then who forgives sins except Allah? So that shows us a habit of Allah. Follow up the wickedness with righteousness. Another benefit of this hadith. is that following up the wicked sin with something righteous has two ways in which you can do that. Or it can have two possible meanings. Or there are two ways in which this can be true or happen. One of the ways is that the person intends to remove that particular sin that they committed by doing a righteous uh, deed. So, for example, the one who commits uh, uh, zina, akram of Allah, but right after they get up and they make ghuzl and they make rakatain. This person is trying to remove that wicked sin that they did, following it up with a righteous deed. That's one way, that specific sin, uh, doing a specific action to remove that sin. Li yataqarrab Allah bihasanat, falman li mardatihi. That the person does it with sorrow, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, seeking his pleasure. So they follow up that wicked deed 
with a righteous deed. The other way that this happens is that the person does righteous deeds in general. In general, they're, they, they, they know they committed that sin. So in general, they're doing sadaqah. They're just extra prayer. They're fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. They're doing all kind of other deeds in general to follow up those wicked sins that they did. So that is two, which, two ways in which uh, a person can follow that up. Uh, to not extend the length, uh, some of the other benefits this hadith shows us is a warning against uh, falling into sin and not fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith also, another benefit, it shows us the superior, superiority and the importance of having righteous deeds and having good manners, as we mentioned. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu was addressed by Allah azza wa jal, wa innaka la'ala khulukin azim. Verily you are on righteous, uh, excellent uh, uh, character, and this is what the mu'mineen are ordered to follow. And that's following the, 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 the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, أَذْكُلُوا فِي مِزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامُ مِنْ وَرْسُنُ الْخُلْقِ أَذْكُلُوا فِي أَذْكُلُوا شَيْءِ أَذْكُلُوا شَيْءِ فِي مِزَانَ الْمُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِضُ الْفَيْشَ الْبَدِيمِ the, the heaviest thing that weighs, scale, that weighs on the scale of the believer on the day of judgment is righteous deeds, uh, is husn al is having good manners. And there are so many ayat and so many hadith to affirm that. And there are many other fawaid and benefits from this hadith. But for the sake of keeping short, shorter and, and rambling on, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me for my many sins and shortcomings and forgive you as well and protect us and preserve us all. Anything I said that was correct was from the wise of Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa